Okay, what's going on, Free Code Camp people, or anyone else who watches my channel? I think I'm embedding my picture. Hi. Well, anyway, this is going to be the drum machine. Um, I think it's for the front end frameworks uh, degree in Free Code Camp. But we're gonna and we're gonna make it on CodePen. Uh, I've already made it. It's gonna be short and simple. It's going to be like 100 lines of code, or less than 100 lines of JavaScript, and minimal CSS. I'll leave most of the CSS up to you. Uh, you know, I'll leave it in a place where you can do a lot of different things with it. But without further ado, let's get started. So I've got a cheat sheet with all the code I've already written here, just in a notepad. But I'm going to code it all out. Um, so you can go along with the video. And I have a React template. Uh, I haven't used CodePen in quite a while. I've been doing other stuff, but I built a React template. They let you build templates. It's pretty cool. You can just preload in packages and preload in uh, a little bit of boilerplate code. So I made one for React, so I didn't have to go through and click all the dumb React stuff. I'll use my template. Here's my template. I just got a root div, no CSS. Or actually, I've got SAS there, but I'm going to hide that. Uh, so we'll get rid of that. One thing we want to bring in is the testing suite. Which you you can find it on. It's all over the place on the uh, Free Code Camp website. But you gotta have this testing suite in your. Uh, well, I've got the old Reacts in here. So let's get the new Reacts. React should be up to sixteen by now. I think. Let's see. React. React. Um, that should be fine. Pen title. Code camp. Drum machine. Okay, okay. So that gives us our testing suite so we can go to drum machine and we can see everything. Because you got to get, if you've done any of these challenges, you know, you got to get, you know, this kind of stuff correct. So, we've got our boilerplate here, and like this is usually it's easy stuff first, outer container uh, with the ID of drum machine. Simple enough. Take a div here. And go to ID drum machine. That. I don't like semicolons either. Yeah, let's see. make this bigger and do a live view over here. Okay, that way we can check our tests over here. What would what was next? Okay, it's got to contain the other elements. Uh, another element with an ID of display. So that is going to house the name of the sound eventually. But basically, we got to make a drum machine that, you know, you push a button on the keyboard and it's going to make a certain sound and you're going to be able to click, click the actual div on the screen and uh, you're also going to be able to push a letter that corresponds with um, that button and that sound. And then the name of the sound is going to display in this display uh, H1 as we got it right here. You know what? I'll make that a div. Now. Um, Okie dokie. Control S saves it. That's a good quick little thing. 
I just go straight by the test. Within drum machine, I can see nine clickable drum pad elements, each with a class name of drum pad, a unique ID that describes the audio clip, and the drum pad will be set up to trigger, or that'll be set up to trigger, and an inner text that corresponds to one of the following keys in this order. So that's the upper, or the left-hand side of the keyboard. So whenever I see like nine clickable elements, I'm thinking make another component. Um, I'll make another class component and call it uh, drum pad. And have that extend react that component. And render and return. I'll just have a return div and that was a class which of course is class name in React the drum pad well, I'll actually double check that see I, I should just copy and paste these somewhere so I don't have to keep pulling this up Drum pad elements with a class name of drum pad, a unique ID that describes the audio clip, and a drum pad will set up to trigger an inner text. So it has all these properties. So what I did was, and I'm just going to copy and paste this, and I'll put this, I'll put this in the uh, the comments. I'll put this object in the comments. Or a link to it so you can copy and paste it. I guess there'll be a link to this pen anyhow, but this is just to give you an idea of what an object could look like that you could use for this. So it's just a regular array, it's a data object, and there's nine of them, nine objects inside the array, and they each have an ID property. The ID is describing. Uh, the ID is describing the sound. Um, the letter in order, uh, just how they listed Q, W, E, A, S, D, Z, X, C. And then I looked up all these sounds, different MP3 waves, lowercase MP3 is the same. Um, I looked them up from uh, like a sound bank website that I found. Um, I forget where the sound bank, it might be right here, findsounds.com, www.findsounds.com. That might be the one. Uh, it's been a while, but so you get this, uh, get this data. It's a good place to start. So down here, You can map over that data. You've got nine pieces of data. So you can uh, go data.map and a function of each piece of data. Then just use uh, parentheses and that makes it uh, automatically return. You don't have, you can skip writing return. We'll return a jump pad for each one of those. So what else do we need there? The jump pads have a unique ID that describes the audio clip. Okay, let's set that up. We want each of these jump pads to have a unique ID. So it's got a class that needs a unique ID. What, how are we going to get a unique ID? So in the next video, I have to do, these are going to be 10 minute uh, increments. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how you uh, set up the ID and finish up the rest of the challenge.